Sailor locks his friend with him inside a sinking submarine, only to wait for the unthinkable. But before we start, please give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to Wonderbot and hit the bell so you'll never miss any uploads from us. Our lives are half fate and half our choices. And when such moments arrive, it tells you what kind of person you are. We're all born as the same species, but such events define us as individuals. While watching movies like Dunkirk, Hacksaw Ridge, The Great Escape, all of us have wondered for at least once how long these people's stories stayed unknown and how they were unaware that their names would be recorded in the books of history forever. This story is hard to believe, yet it's the truth that no one can deny. Why a sailor locked himself and his friend inside a sinking submarine? The answer is going to bring you to disbelief. Well, our today's story takes us back in the ages of war. Every boy who chooses the soldier life for himself is aware of the risk involved from the very first step. The thing that scares most of the people is death and a soldier always stays ready for it. Being prepared for death is a different thing and actually facing it's different. And even the greatest of thinkers can't be sure of what it takes to decide between running away from danger and running towards it. On October 14, 1900, in Putnam, Connecticut, in the Brault family, a healthy boy was born. Joseph and Flora, his parents, named him Henry. Since an early age, Henry loved oceans and always talked about sailing. He grew up listening to stories of his relatives' voyages. What his parents thought to be a childish love was going to shape this little boy's life in a whole different direction. Even before he could finish his schooling, he made a choice. It was during the First World War that the oceans were calling Henry and he knew he must go. Royal Navy needed more dedicated men and Henry was ready to become one of those. At the age of 16, when most of the boys are lost in their first love charms, Henry put his name for selection in the Navy and got selected. His family didn't want him to go, but he knew where he belonged. Indeed, getting selected in the Royal Navy was a golden opportunity for 16-year-old Henry. Being selected in the Navy meant getting paid for doing what he loved. Henry always dreamt of doing both. So the young boy worked for the White Ensign in the Royal Navy. He was just one face among thousands of others, wearing the same uniform, brought together with the aim of winning the war. Like most of the teenage guys and girls, Henry never indulged in teen attraction. He was always amused by the idea of vast oceans. His uncle, Albert J. Brault, who was honored as the local VFW post was named after him, always told him that great work means how and some people are always different from the crowd. His words truly inspired the youngster. Submarines have been used in wars and have been proved to be one of the most effective methods. Unlike jet planes, submarines can reach its target without being noticed. Not to ignore that it involves the highest risk factor. Trying to get an exit from the bowels was always a difficult thing. Uncountable sailors lost their lives with no ways to get out of the submarine and eventually drowned in the ocean. Henry was always eager to learn more and for the next couple years, he learned the amazing art of seamanship. He became a professional as he knew it all about the naval tradition and fortunately, he received all this knowledge from the experts who spent most of their lives on the oceans. Who knew all these lessons will soon fall short in front of the game of life? Henry Brault served the Royal Navy until he turned 20. Not everyone settles for less, and Henry knew it was time for him to move ahead in his career. After four years of hard work and expertise as a sailor, Henry left Royal Navy, but his journey with the seas was far from over. What lay ahead was going to be the biggest challenge of his life. Henry Brault took one significant decision of joining the U.S. Navy in 1921. It was his long years of hard work that paid off in the U.S. Navy. His work was highly appreciated that he even got promoted to the rank of torpedo man's mate second class. With promotion came huge responsibilities too, and with it, the risk increases. Yes, those were peaceful years, but it was the time between lying between world wars and the U.S. was emerging as a powerful country on the globe. Even during those years, the U.S. Navy was quite active. Every now and then, there were all these missions to get closer to the other powering country's borders. One such was the mission that was assigned to Henry Brault. Henry's new project was on the U.S. submarine O-5. It was a newly made O-class submarine that was specially constructed for serving during the First World War. From stern to bow, this submarine was 172 feet long 
and it was intact with all the advanced features and its time including four torpedo tubes and an on-deck gun. During those years, this model had only 15 other similar O-Class submarines on the planet. The submarine shaft dove in with a bunch of 29 Navy officers. Henry felt proud to be one of those 29. These submarines could dive as deep as 200 feet and were supported by two diesel engines instead of one. This helped O5 to drive the singular propeller sub in a much more effective manner. Many sailors dreamt of sailing on this shaft for at least once in their time of service, and Henry Brault got this opportunity. But what came along with this opportunity would have cost many lives, including his own. These submarines were sent on the missions when the war was about to end. Yes, it was just five months before the First World War was about to end. These submarines were brought in as much as possible, but what mattered was the timings, a thing that can change the fate of any war. The same thing can be said about the timings of these submarines. Why this information is necessary? You'll know it soon enough. The fact that resources were enough but the time was decided the result of World War I. The war ended and these submarines were still as new as their first dive. So these submarines were not given rest even after the war was over. And no doubt these underwater shafts made their builders proud with the usual work. There's one similarity in these submarines and Henry Brault. Just like the O-Class submarine, Henry II wasn't able to prove his worth during World War I. Also, this didn't mean that the submarines weren't good enough or Henry wasn't passionate for duty. It just meant the submarines were yet to be put to fuller use, and Henry was yet to face that one life-altering moment. While O5 was still in service, it was usually diving in the Atlantic coast between Cape Cod and Key West for long durations. All this time, luckily, the crew never came across any enemy submarines or ships. The submarine always stayed far from the trackers of the enemies. But who said that enemies are all the danger we've got to be prepared for? And this fact will be proved in 1923. To Henry Brault, being a crew member at the prestigious US-05 meant a huge achievement. The crew was assigned a simple mission this time, and if things would have gone according to plan, the crew will be home that very month itself. Trouble always comes uninvited and from unexpected directions. The more one thinks of being prepared, the more messed up the situations get. O5 was assigned to the submarine school at New London, Connecticut after the war was over. And that's when the day came when Henry will be stuck in a dilemma and would have to make a choice that will impact not only his but many other people's lives too. In 1923, a trip was assigned in the name of O5 from the naval base at Coco Solo to the Panama Canal. They were supposed to leave and finish this journey as soon as possible. At first, it looked like just all the previous trips, but that wasn't it, as this trip was going to be the one every member of the crew would tell to their kids and later grandkids as a story to be remembered. The early morning of October 28th brought the bad weather with itself. One trouble was leading to another, and while they were searching to reach the Lyman Bay, they were sailing up and down somewhere in unknown seas. The crew soon realized the reason for not reaching at the destined place yet. Unfortunately, the contact with the head office was disturbed and they were lost in the middle of the sea. It was just the beginning of the sad events that were about to take place. As if losing track of the way wasn't bad enough, that there was a ship sailing right in their direction. The whole team was unaware of the ship approaching in their direction. At 6.30 a.m., the United Fruit Company steamer SS Abangrez collided with the O5. The accident caused a 10-foot gap next to the control room on the side of the starboard. The worst thing happened when one of the ballast tanks stopped working. The steamer itself remained unharmed. The O5 submarine staggered in the port's direction, but it was sinking, and the Navy officers knew that the submarine would not make it to shore. The ship was sinking in the 42 feet deep water, and there was no way to stop that from happening. When the accident took place, eight men were working close to the topside and were lucky enough to get to the steamer. These eight people were rescued. But 12 men were still missing, and with every passing moment, the hopes of anyone surviving the collision was decreasing. Within next some time, other sailors who made it out of the submarine were also rescued. Within some time, the total of rescued sailors was 15. Sadly, there were no signs of the remaining five sailors, and Henry Brault was one of those still missing. What's greater than death? Some people believe it's courage. Yes, one day or another, everyone is meant to lose the battle. But as long as one lives, living with dignity is what it's all about. That day, these five remaining sailors saw death face to face, 
and it was going to be the most difficult moment of their lives in that submarine, hanging between death and death. Henry Brault was easily able to escape from the torpedo room where he was during the collision. He used a ladder and was able to get to the top side of the sinking submarine. From there, the way the rescue was clear. Just like the other sailors, Henry too could have jumped into the sea and reached the steamer. But he didn't. Thinking why? Well, he had something else on his mind other than his life. Henry was always known as the one person with distinct thoughts and views about everything. He used to look at the world a bit differently, and he was never ashamed to admit it in public. This unique characteristic stopped him from getting off the submarine that day. It was right when Henry Brault climbed up the ladder that he thought of his shipmate crossed his mind. Lawrence T. Brown was the person whose shift got over an hour before the accident, and so he went to his room below the deck to sleep. Henry knew that Lawrence was exhausted after his shift and would have fallen asleep before the collision. It was at that moment that Henry Brault was stuck in the dilemma of saving his own life or thinking about his friend. He just couldn't leave his friend behind. He knew Lawrence was asleep and wasn't aware of all that was going on. He made his choice and was aware that it might cost him his own life. Henry Brault looked for Lawrence and found him in his room. The room's floor was filled with water and they didn't have much time left. The moment Lawrence woke up, he was taken over by an immense shock of all that was going on. But it was too late for them to get out of the submarine. Henry and Lawrence got inside the submarine's torpedo room. They couldn't get out anymore unless anyone comes back for help. Trapped in the hull, they could only pray to be rescued before death takes over them. At that point, they weren't aware that there were three more people trapped inside the submarine. Yes, the divers were checking the submarine for any survivors. The divers were continuously tapping on the submarine to check if anyone's still alive. Henry and Lawrence responded to the divers' signals on the metal. So now they knew that two of the sailors were inside, but the only question was how to get them out of the submarine. After being sure that they were alive, the team of divers was trying to figure out a way to get to them. Finally, they came up with an idea of using the large crane named Ajax to get the submarine out of the sea. But it wasn't as easy as it sounds. They were able to move the submarine towards the harbor, and now the crane was close enough to lift the submarine. But would it actually be able to lift it? The divers dove under the submarine to connect the cables that will be the first step in trying to lift the submarine and save the two sailors. The harbor was overcrowded after the nearby people heard of the collision and the two sailors stuck inside. But the attempts were continuously failing to save them. In the next two days, three attempts were made to save the two sailors and look for the remaining three. Unfortunately, all the three attempts went in vain, and Lawrence was losing hope of survival. But Henry didn't let him fall short of hopes. Stuck in the cold, dark submarine with nothing to eat, the two sailors had no way out. On the third day, the submarine's parts were drained out, which lowered the weight of the submarine. At last, the crane successfully lifted the submarine out and dropped it on the surface. More than 31 hours after the accident, Henry and Lawrence were rescued from the submarine. But what about the remaining three sailors? The remaining three sailors were not able to survive, and their bodies were found in the submarine. It broke Henry's heart knowing that there were three more lives that he could have saved if only he would have known they were still in the submarine. But Henry was yet to be awarded for his bravery. This act of saving his friend's life got brought a lot of appreciation from everyone in the U.S. Navy, and he was honored with the Medal of Honor by President Calvin Coolidge. With this, he became the first and, till date, the only sailor to receive the highest award in the U.S. military personnel. He lived a peaceful life and passed away on December 5, 1941, a true hero.